It's like whenever this happened, I'll hold it up, I'll turn it over, there's always a large Bristol worm. Hey, what's up, Reefers? I'm so happy to be back. Uh, I'm ready to share some update of this 45 gallon tank with you guys. Uh, it has been about two months since I last did the update on this tank and quite a few things have happened. So we're gonna break it down a little bit. We're gonna talk about what happened with the fish, the corals, and then some of the issue that I've been facing and future and then future plan with this tank. So since we're looking at the clownfish right here, um, they're playing nice today. But for the past, I'll say uh, last month, they have been battling. They've just been fighting each other. You can still see it on the lips, all right? So this is a male. The male has really grown considerably. Right now the lip is okay. But if you look on my Instagram at inappropriate reefer, you see I have some photos of pretty much the skin hanging off the lips of the male and the female. For the female, it's upper lip. For the male, it's bottom lip. It was bad. It was really bad at least two weeks ago. And they've just been constantly fighting. But they seem to have sorted out their difference. Um, and I, I started seeing more um, submissive move from the male. And a lot of people are saying that, okay, the male actually got to a, to a decent size. And some people are afraid that I may have two females. But again, they grew up together uh, for about four years. Um, and a lot of people are saying that it just kind of like last last dominance, last battle for dominance before they kind of settle down and start mating. So I'm keeping an eye out because they seem to have settled down. They no longer fighting as bad. Like right now the female is kind of chasing male out, but honestly, this is nothing compared to how it was like um, a week or two ago. I was this close to kind of pulling one of them out. It was so bad. Uh, but it sounds like it's just kind of part of the dating game. These clowns, man, they, they use Tinder or something. This is intense. So the next fish I want to talk about is Kramer, the silver belly wrasse. Uh, they grow a little bit, always have a full belly and always happy-go-lucky, always crashing the parties, but he just want to say hi. And then the Yasha Gobi family, I think, uh, let's see, so they hang out in the back these days. Oh, there, there he is. There's, there's the male. You see the large, long banner? The female's top banner got nipped off at some point. It'll start growing back and it'll get nipped off again. I'm not sure if that's something that the pistol shrimp is doing or the uh, male yakagopi is doing. But right now, they're kind of tucked in the back, so it's kind of hard to see. We'll see if they come out for the later part of this video. I'll talk a little bit more about them. And of course, who can forget these little fellas, this little foul fish. Where do you go? Oh, there, there he is. There he is. So they honestly don't really do too much for me. Meaning that they are, they're kind of goofy. They chase each other. They, they don't live in harmony for some reason. They just, they're supposed to be a pair. But they just hate each other. You see that? They just hate each other. They chase each other, and they just kind of, they just kind of goofy. But I do think that they are keeping Aptasias uh, in check. Remember back then, I have a big Aptasia right here named Bob. Um, every week or so, they spawn some little s smaller ones. But every day, well, not every day, but every two or three days, all the babies will disappear. So I suspect. Is these file fish? These are the radials file fish that's been um, keeping the aptasias in check. Now that's actually a good segue to go into corals. Let's talk about Bob. A couple weeks ago, started hitchhiking. I believe on that Max, uh, that uh, turbo snail, the Mexican turbo snail. So he hopped on there, rode around the tank for a week or so, and then settled. Unfortunately, he picked the Christmas tree rock to settle in, and as you can see, he is kind of clearing out this one area for himself. I am not a fan of where he picked, so I will be getting him off that rock pretty soon. I'm not sure what to do with him yet. He is either gonna go back to this corner right here where he started out from, or he may just go down the toilet. I don't know, what do you guys think? Leave a comment, let me know what I should do with Bob. I'm torn. You may have spied these little guys right here. Now these are baby jawbreaker. That one is for Jim Telegram on Instagram. I've been holding on to these guys for a couple months already. However, this is new. This is like a tiny piece of jawbreaker that one day I found laying on a sand right here. Now I think it actually came from this cluster right here. That is the original jawbreaker mushroom I got about a year and a half ago. It is developed really nicely. It spawned one pile over here and then a tiny one over there underneath where the, um, the pally is. But I think probably the pally blocked too much light and the mushroom just bounced off. And I found it right there and that's why I captured it and put it in that little cool little 3D printed dish right there. 
Now, again, I gotta give um, Two Gay Reefers from Australia a shout out for hooking me up with this um, this little 3D printed dish. What it is, basically a dish with a mesh top, and it'll fit like a frag, uh, frag disc perfectly. And this is, I believe, is from um, um, Gallery Aquatics or Gallery Aquarium in Australia. They 3D printed these and they sell them at the store. So once again, thank you to Gay Reefers for sending this to me to try out. Fantastic. Speaking of SPS, for some reason, SPS has been doing really well in this tank. Uh, it's probably thanks to the um, this coral box dozer right here. I doubt it in and everything seems to be really solid and stable. Uh, things have just been doing really well, especially the SPS. Um, right, right here, I'm actually, I'm specifically really happy about this right here. This is the Forest Fire SPS, the Forest Fire Digitata. Um, you guys probably be like, oh, that's like an easy, easy SPS, but I've had so much trouble with it. So I'm just so happy that it's doing well. The top part is kind of bleached out, but that is because of a phosphate spite I have recently. But everything is back to normal, all the polyps extended. If you look back at my older videos, all this, this core right here is all bleached out, all the polyps like pinpoint really small. At one point I was like, okay, this is not going to happen, this is not going to make it. But somehow, it pulled through and then it started thriving. Just look at that. And I think it is actually slowly reclaiming the bleach skeleton, which is really cool. Now, since we're looking at SPS, look up here as well. We got the, um, I think some people call it the potato chip, um, coral potato chip. Uh, well, I got that from Fish of Hex at one of the frag swap and I really like the growth formation. And it's taking on a green coloration. It used to be just like a tan brown color, but it's picking on some green, so it's kind of cool. Uh, we got that right there, and then we got the, um, man, I can't pronounce any of these. P something. <laughs> I know that's S something. But they have all grown really well the past uh, couple months. Um, ever since I dialed in the doser, and I kind of just like stopped messing with the tank. Now another thing that's growing really well, actually two things growing really well, is the Monty Cap in the back. I've never had, I don't really have issue with Monty Cap in this tank. I guess like staying on trend, the orange Monty Cap or red Monty Cap is growing well. However, I'm really happy to see the um, this purple, God, what is this called? Po this, no, this is Monty, Monty Digitata as well, right? I don't know, man. I'm slowly getting into SPS games, so pardon me for not knowing the name of this. But this also, also was holding steady for the longest time. But also, recently started taking off and the branches started growing taller, so I'm really happy to see this. So if, if I step back a little bit, that whole side is pretty much dedicated to SPS. You may have spied these two little guys right here. So these two belly mini max actually came from the 10 gallon budget nano tank upstairs. Uh, I moved it down here. Uh, I have a long story to tell about those guys. The Xenia, you see that they're not happy at all, and I know exactly why. It's because like recently I changed out two, well, four of the T5 bulbs. I used to run two, um, two Blue Plus and two Atinic 03, but I switched it over to two Blue Plus and two Coral Plus. And I tweaked the Radeon a little bit, I'll dial back the light, but I feel like the light is still too strong. So all these corals got shocked, especially the Xenia is really just starting to come back. Like before it was actually doing decent, now, now they're just starting to come back. However, the clams are happy. Here's the uh, Petco $50 Theresa clam is still doing happy. Um, through the last two months, it actually gaped really badly, twice. And I freaked out, went on Instagram, posted about it. People were like, man, good luck, blah, blah, blah. But somehow it pulled through, always okay the next day. Uh, but one thing I noticed, it's like whenever this happened, I'll hold it up, I'll turn it over. There's always a large Bristol worm. So I'm, I don't think, I'm not sure if it's correlated, but I feel like every time I see this now, maybe there's something bothering the clam from the underside. And that would be the first thing I check from this point forward. And this is the um, hybrid Teresa slash Scormosa clam I picked up from Pacific East Aquaculture at one of the Reef Club meeting. It, has, it hasn't really grown for me. And I was checking the shell. I don't really see any new growth, so that's not good. But it has been around for at least half a year now, well, if not more than that. Uh, versus you see Teresa, you always see like a um, new, new shell ring growing along the edge. So that's a good indicator. And I still have the three ammo crab just kind of enjoying life in this tank. These guys are bold. They're always out and about, not afraid of people. Let's, let's kind of transition into the issue I recently run into. As you know, as I was planning for the wedding, um, we put together a wedding in two months. And it was, it was, 
<laughs> it was one of the toughest things I've done in my life. But I had a lot of help, and I feel like it went off uh, almost without a hitch. It was, it was fantastic, great time. I would not do it again, but I'm glad I did it. However, um, once I had time to kind of slow down, take a look at the tank, I noticed that some of the cores are close, specifically the Zoas. Uh, some of these guys are closed up. Um, these leather, they're okay, not super happy, and the A-can also showing its displeasure. Uh, immediately I thought, because the Zoa closed up, I think maybe it's a phosphate issue. Uh, thanks to East Sleep Reef, uh, Antonio mentioned that whenever Zoa looks closed up, check phosphate, usually it's phosphate, and <laughs> sure enough, phosphate was sitting at 0.25. Not high enough to go like DEFCON 1, but it is an issue. So immediately I started doing a large water change. I think I changed out 30% water change and um, I think started just bouncing back. So that was it. I believe it was the phosphate issue. So that is the, um, the I'll say the biggest issue with this tank while I was away. Um, the cause of that is because my refugium, I have a really, really beefy refugium. Um, it was packed because I did not prune it for about two months while I was doing uh, doing all the wedding preps. Um, I did uh, I did one huge pulling, and I, if you guys know me, you know that I feed heavy. I feed heavy uh, frozen food, reef nutrition. I just dump everything in there. I've been spoiled because I have a really healthy refugium system. But because I put all these macroalgae out, I guess all those nutrients got nowhere else to break down. I mean, like skimmers working overtime, but it's not enough. Still not enough. So I had a huge, huge phosphate issue. You can you can still see some of the diatom on the sand bed, right? So after the water change, I think that thing, things get under control a little bit, and I, I see that the macro is kind of growing back uh, pretty good now. Uh, by the way, this is the Zetlite S200 refugium light fantastic products um, quite a few people ask me what light is this so that that's a little bit drop in there but a few fugium is coming back now and pair with the water change I think things are kind of coming back under control so I think we dodge that bullet right there however that is kind of like the big thing that this tank went went through in the last uh, two months while I was away now in terms of future plan future plan this tank is packed so the plan is to find more room for more corals while I set up the 150 gallon uh, reef tank that is gonna go up, that has to go up within two months. Uh, I'm gonna move a lot of the tanks down to the basement um, since I'm married man now, um, but that is one of the plan I have. 150 gallon gotta go up, and until then, corals gotta fit in here somehow. And we got quite a few frack swap <laughs> happening locally. So. One thing I'm looking into is possibly fragging the frog spawn again, even though I kind of don't want to. It looks pretty cool like this. Uh, one interesting thing I noticed is that the rose poop an enemy has been staying here in this location a lot, and it has been stinging the bottom part of the frog spawn. And I noticed that the new polyps from the frog spawn started branching out further. So it's no longer a small cluster. It started branching out like that away from the anemone. So smart, and it looks kind of cool actually. However, I'm trying to work in a couple more pieces of rock, maybe like one right here and then one right there so that I can like have more space to um, uh, put corals. And also I plan to start moving more SPS to the walls to maybe do a, almost like an enclosure. That may be kind of cool. Like for this part, that part I'm gonna leave open and keep using the um, current USA backlits, which I really, really like. Speaking of frag swap, there are a couple nice swaps going on um, locally. I believe the Mason Dixon Reef Club is gonna happen next weekend by the time you're watching this. Um, so I'll definitely be going to pick up some uh, some frags for this tank, as especially the 10 gallon budget nano tank upstairs. Because like um, the 10 gallon budget tank has really stabilized and I can really start piling the corals in and man, that tank is gonna be awesome. I'm really excited about that tank. All right guys, I think I'm gonna end this video right here because it has been quite long. There's actually a lot of things I did not get into that I wish I, I did. Um, for example, the Aiken heads, it actually popped out like five babies. And also the Fathead Dandro also popped out a lot of babies while I was away. And also the frack, the rack just went nuts. Um, it just went nuts. Things just growing all over the rack and stuff like that. I really wanna share these with you guys, but looks like I will have to save it for a uh, upcoming video on Instagram. So I guess um, I'm just gonna sign off right now and next week maybe I'll talk about the budget nano tank and I think we have a new tank inhabitant and man I got a couple stories to tell you about that tank which uh
I don't look forward to telling that story. <laughs> Anyways, I will see you guys next week and thank you for hanging around. If you are still around, dude, you are the hardcore reef squad. Thank you. I appreciate you watching the videos and I will see you next summer.